Well, obviously a power supply, right mono and left, not left mono. A lot of them do left and mono. Uh, and the obligatory MIDI ports. Now, I remember at the time, um, I just, you know, fell in love with the sound. So I, I just wanted that R sound, the, um, the first sound. I think I've bought the whole synth for one sound. Um, and I also liked the fact that it was, it had lots of waveforms and in theory you could make fantastic sounds. But that was highlighted as, sh as a shortcoming at the time. It should have had multiple outs. I also had a Roland um, D110. Uh, did that have separate outs? I can't remember. I've got a funny, I've sold that now, sold it years ago. I've got a funny feeling it had a left and right and an, an additional two outs, if memory serves correct. But these days, 2012 onwards, it doesn't matter. They're so cheap, these things, to buy. I picked this one up for, I think it was £42 plus postage. Nothing for a synth. You could have a meal out for that. My point being that if you want separate outs, just buy a few of them. Buy three of them. There you are, you've got three separate outs now. <laughs> you can do that, you can take the mic. So, <clears throat> let's turn it around the other way and let's show you the thing that really interests me about this synth. This is what interests me about this synth and the reason that I repurchased one. It's the analog waveforms that you get with the synth. Now I know the more modern synths come with absolutely tons of waveforms built in, but um, I wouldn't say there's all you need here, but there's a heck of a good range going from sine waves, and these um, different waveforms basically will move up and down in pitch, where well, they're moving up in pitch. Uh, saw waves, and, and the thing that I like about it is you can visualise it. You can visualise the waves here. They've given you what happens to the waveform over time. So you've got the saws, squares, inverse saw, triangle, random, and then you get on to the realistic sounds. <laughs> I, I say that with a small um, smirk because obviously it's 12-bit realistic. But, as I shall demonstrate hopefully in future videos, uh, these days, because the things are so cheap, by the way, strings, pianos, bass here, because they're so cheap, mix it in with another synth, and you can come up with some incredible sounds for very little money. For example, one of my favourite combinations with the K1R is the K1R trumpet with a Casio CZ series uh, brass section. Put those two together, they sound tremendous. We come through horns, brass here, piano, clavs, clarinets, classical stuff. Then we get into drums. I don't think much of those 12-bit drums. <clears throat> Although if you're going to give me an EMU uh, SP12 or SP1200, I'll take that with its 12-bit sounds. Thank you very much. Um, bells and stuff. The bit I'm trying to head towards here, oh dear, I'm going to turn the page, is right at the end you get some synth sounds. Hooray! I'm very much an analog fan and my, the challenge I've given myself here is can I make this digital synth, 12-bit digital synth, sound vaguely analog? Of course it doesn't have a filter sweep. I'm hoping in the future to have a filter built for me uh, where I shall manually sweep the thing. And you end up with the MIDI specs at the back. In the owner's manual, it's a pretty good manual. And a lot of these um, manuals from the time they actually teach you about synthesis. You get a view of the synth. And the names of the ins and outs. It takes you through the various parameters and what they do to affect the sound. It's a really good manual, even if you don't own a K1R, it's still a good read. The manual finishes with the specs, obviously. MIDI implementation chart. All of the parameters in the synth. Various MIDI uh, system stuff. How to write and store. How 
and the fats um, it's got these multi patches which I think were quite a new concept back in the late 80s this is after the CZ series and they were already combining patches by then it wouldn't surprise me if the DX7s and that lot did that as well but of course it used to steal um, your polyphony, if that's the right word, your polyphonicness of the synth. So I, I hated that at the time, because at the time, and I'm sure if you were around at the time, what you wanted, you wanted a workstation for the price of less than a workstation. You wanted one or two synths to carry your whole mix, and you went out gigging with a small rack and a sequencer, and that was it. That's what you did in the late 80s, midded up. <laughs> We've had a, we had a few occasions where um, it was too cold and these things lock up or semi-lock up. That's the end of your show. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this tour around what you get with your Kai K1R rack mount synth. And in future videos I shall, well right now actually I'm doing a demo of can you produce a tune just with a K1R? And the answer is of course, although to be honest with you I'd much rather have real drums or drum samples. But anyway, till next time, it's been Steve from SciFiFunk.com.